konnichiwa minasan and welcome to the class in the second lecture series on introduction to Japanese language and culture. So today's class is a continuation of the previous class and in the previous class we did potential form for group 1 and group 2. So now this time we are going to do for group 3 which has two verbs and you know that it is kuru and suru. So let us see what we have today and what all we are going to do with these two verbs. Now I have your kaiva and you listen to the kaiva and see what all you can understand. Mira-san, watashi wa raigashi nihon e ikimasu. Ii desu ne, Rao-san. Doushite ureshiku nai desu ka? Jitsu wa nihongo wo hanasu koto ga dekimasen. じゃあ、今から日本語を勉強してください。1ヶ月で少しぐらいはできますよ。私は1ヶ月で日本語を習いましょうという本を持っています。その方のラオさんにあげますから心配ありません。あ、ありがとうございます。頑張ってね。あり
keep coming up again and again so it's always better there is squishy over here squishy means little it shows quantity and then you have shimpai you so all these are there practice this kanji so that you are able to read fluently now you just heard the kaiwa between rao and meera today we are going to do group 3 we have already done group 1 potential form verbs in our last lesson so the two irregular verbs of group 3 can someone tell me what they are well they are kuru and suru now the potential form for suru is dekiru which means can do and kuru changes to what kuru changes to koraririu in potential form which means i can come i have the ability to come so now Now in our last lesson, we learnt noun ga dekiru, for example, nihongo ga dekiru. Now let us see some sentences and see how it is done. So suru as I just now told you is dekiru and these are group 3 irregular verbs. verbs why they are irregular because you can see from suru that it does not have anything to do with suru the verb itself changes so noun ga dekiru nihongo ga dekiru so i have the ability to speak in japanese ego ga dekiru so i can speak in english I have the ability or the potential to speak in English. Now, sore is a pronoun, so again, same thing, sore wa dekimas. You could point at something, or somebody has asked you, and you are saying sore wa dekimas, and I am unable to do this activity. For example, golf ga dekimas ka ie, golf ga deki. Masen. You have a lot of examples today. So, watashi wa nihongo ga dekimasen. It is similar to watashi wa nihongo ga hanase masen. Now, the important part over here is that we have ga for potential form. In this case, We just change the I over here and make it because it is she, it is a syllable. So, we just put a say over here and it becomes potential form. In case of suru, we change the verb itself. Now, you can see kono shigoto wa ichiji kan de deki mas or deki masen. Why they over here? Because within this period of time, kono shigoto wa dekimasen, I cannot do, sore wa dekimasen, similar to this one, sore wa dekimasen or kono shigoto wa dekimasen. But if we put time over here, then what happens? Ichijikan de, within that allotted time, within that time period. So, instead of Ichijikan now, you can have any time expression, these are time, time expressions, we have done them. So, nishukan de dekimasen, nikka de dekimasen, 3 days, nishukan is 2 weeks, 3 days and nikagetsu is 2 months. And so, kono shigoto could be replaced with organizing conference or preparing a paper, writing an essay, anything and you can give I can do or I 
cannot do in a certain period of time using particle de. Now, if we add the noun koto to dekiru, verb plus koto ga dekiru is similar in meaning to the potential form done in lesson 20. Koto is a noun and when it joins with a verb, it turns into a noun phrase and then it can replace the noun in the noun ga dekiru pattern. So, Nihongo ga dekiru, golf ga dekiru, cycling ga dekiru, it could be anyone, it could be watashi or it could be chichi or haha anyone, wa something ga dekiru. So, watashi wa nihongo ga hanasemasu. Now, when I add koto to this verb over here, what happens? So, it shows that this part becomes a noun phrase, can be used as a noun and the rest remains the same, ga dekiru. So, you will see noun which is over here and if we have verb plus koto, this koto which is a noun itself, this word and is added to the verb, then these two make a noun phrase. Meaning remains the same with this and this and this, the meaning remains the same. Grammatically, yes, they are a little different, but meaning wise, it does not change. Now, where it changes and what happens, I will tell you right now. Verb plus koto ka dekiru basically means the activity of the verb. You could say it shows that the speaker has the ability to do what the verb is saying. Well, the difference between noun ga dekiru and verb plus koto ga dekiru is that noun ga dekiru is very, very informal. You could use it with friends, informally, casually. It is more colloquial. Whereas, verb plus koto ga dekiru is more polite and formal and to be used with seniors and in very formal situations. You have a lot of examples today, so you can practice with those. The important part over here is that in this construction, va and ga both are used. So, you have noun va, watashi wa, verb in plain form plus koto ga dekimasu. You can very well understand why it is in plain form over here because we have a verb in mass form right at the end. So, you can see hanasu koto ga dekiru, taberu koto ga dekiru. So, what taberu koto ga dekiru? Niku wa taberu koto ga dekimasu. Nihongo o hanasu koto ga dekimasu. I can speak, I can eat meat. Now, you can see these examples, Nihongo ga hanasemasu, again and again the same constructions are coming. You can of course use them with other verbs as well. This is just to make it very clear in your minds how it is used and what particles are going to be used where. So, Nihongo ga hanasemasu, dare watashi, watashi wa Nihongo ga hanasemasu. So, you will see ga is being used. Nihongo o hanasu koto ga dekimasu. So, this activity of talking, what? Nihongo. Basically, meaning is the same, but grammatically it is a little different construction wise. So, hanasu koto ga dekimasu. Somewhere I have put it in plain form, some places I am using mas form. The reason here is just to show that these two mean exactly the same and can be used in exactly the same manner. Only the level of politeness, degree of politeness varies. This is informal and this of course is formal. So, remember mass form is always formal and the plain form is more informal to be used with friends. So, Nihongo o hanasu koto ga dekimasu. This act of talking in Japanese, this activity of talking in Japanese, I can do or I am able to do, basically meaning I can talk in Japanese. So, now, Nihongo no shimbun ga yomemasu. Simple construction. 
noun ga verb in potential form. So, Nihongo ga yomeru. Again, I have put plain form over here. So, Nihongo no shimbun o yomu koto ga. So, I can read the paper in Japanese. Basically, that activity of reading paper in Japanese, I can do. I have the ability to do. Ichi nichi de. So, now one day. Ichi nichi. One day. One day de. Kono shosetsu o yomu koto ga deki nai. I cannot read this novel in one day. So, span. Time. Span. Time. Span. With particle de. Urusai no de. Koko de benkyo suru koto ga deki masen. Urusai is, it is very, very noisy. No de again. Kara can be used is equal to no de, only it is more polite. Benkyo suru koto ga dekimasen. I cannot study over here. Then you can see, imoto wa mainichi oyogimasu. Swim. She swims or oyogimasen. She does not swim. Instead of imoto again, you can use any noun that you want. Imoto wa oyogimasu. Can swim. And cannot swim. So, this is over here and this is over here. Then, watashi wa oyogu koto ga dekimasu or dekimasen. Basically, I can swim and cannot swim. Oyogu koto. The activity of swimming I can do or cannot do. Now, kanji wo kaku koto wa muzukashi desu. Now, you will see something different over here. Same construction, kanji o kaku koto. The activity of writing kanji wa muzukashi desu. Muzukashi is an adjective. So, we cannot change that. There is no potential or ability shown over here. It is just simple that Kanji o kaku koto wa muzukashi desu. It is difficult. So, you can see it can also be used with adjectives. Now, mira wa kouko no toki kara from the time of high school. Ryugaku suru koto o kangaete imasu. She has been thinking of going out for studies. Ryugaku is foreign studies. Suru koto o kangaete imasu. Imasu. There is no dekimasen over here. So, you can use this construction in a lot of ways with adjectives, with te form of the verb, with different verbs. Now, look at this picture and see what is this gentleman doing? He is playing the guitar. So, guitar o hiku is the verb and I think I have told you why we use Hiku. So, well, Rao san wa gita o hiku koto ga dekimasu. He can play the guitar. Can play the guitar. And gita is done in Japanese. Gita. Hiku and hikeru. So, you can see over here. Gita o hikimasu, I play the guitar. Gita ga hikemasu, I can play the guitar. Gita o hiku koto ga dekimasu, again can play the guitar. Now, there is another picture over here of these two and there is lot of kanji and hiragana written. So, somebody is giving a pencil. What is it? Rao wa hiragana o yomu koto ga dekimasu. He can read. Demo kaku koto ga dekimasen. So, she is giving the pencil for him to practice. Rao wa hiragana o yomu koto. He can read but cannot write.
Rao san wa hiragana o yomu koto ga suki desu. Can also be used. He likes reading hiragana. Hiragana ga yomemasu instead of yomu. Hiragana o yomimasu. He reads, he can read yomemasu ga suki desu. Ga will come over here with suki because you are stating something. So, ga suki desu. Now, instead of demo, you can also use kedo and join the sentence. This is sentence 1 and this is sentence 2. With kedo, you can join. With demo, you have to start another sentence to show contrast. So, rao wa hiragana o yomu koto ga dekiru kedo, kaku koto ga deki nai. Same meaning but using another conjunction which is very very informal over here it is more colloquial so kedo. Demo is more formal. Now you have done shumi in your last series and maybe during revision I have told you about shumi. For example watashi no shumi wa cycling desu or watashi no shumi wa sugaku desu. Or watashi no shumi wa gyachi o kansatsu desu, which is bird watching. So let us see what we have here. Watashi no shumi wa shashin desu. Shashin is photographs. I like taking photographs. Mira wa shashin o toru koto ga daisuki desu. So taking pictures she likes. So Mira likes taking pictures. Shashin o toru koto ga. Now, watashi wa shashin o toru koto ga dekimasen. I cannot take pictures. So, cannot take pictures. Who? Watashi. Watashi can again be replaced over here by any noun basically. Name Tomodachi, Otosan, Okasan, Sensei, anyone. Now we have Shashin Otoru Koto wa. This activity is Watashi no Shumi, my hobby. I like doing. I have an interest in Watashi no Shumi desu. Or Watashi no Shumi wa Shashin Otoru Koto. This. Both ways you can use it. Both sentences are correct. Now, look at this. Shiken wa do datta. Do is how. Do datta. Yoku deki nakatta. Negative. Past negative. Deki mas. Deki masen. Deki mashita and deki masen deshita. So the plain form is deki na katta. And yoku you have done. Yoku means not to that extent over here. Otherwise, yoku means lots or many, showing amount. You have done in lesson 20. So, yoku deki nakatta has a negative meaning over here. I could not do that well or that much. Now, sensei to hanashimashita ka? Dekimasen deshita. I could not talk to sensei. You have a to over here. Now, you have done to isho ni. Can someone tell me what to means over here? Well, it means with. Watashi wa tomodachi to issho ni picnic ni ikimashita. With my friend. So, sensei to hanashimashita over here means with sensei. Sensei to hanashimashita. I talked with sensei. So, two people were participating in the conversation. You were talking and he was advising. Now, if I say sensei ni hanashimashita. So, over here you were talking and sensei was just listening. Tomodachi ni hanashimashita. 
友達に言いました。I told him something and he listened. 友達と話しました。There was interaction between two people. Then, 話しなかった。Did not talk. 話せなかった。Could not. Not talk. Did not. Then, できませんでした。Could not do. And then, 話すことができませんでした。I was unable to talk or could not talk. You can see the difference now in all of these. Practice this with other verbs and you will. Understand it better. Now look at this. Benkyo o shimas. I study. Benkyo ga dekimas. I can study. Benkyo suru koto ga dekimas. This activity of study I can do now. Oyogu koto ga dekiru to omoimas. You have done, I think I can. So, dekiru, can, do. What activity? Oyogu koto, swimming. And to moimas is I think. I think I can swim. You have done it with hanasu koto. Koto, you can do nomu koto. So, to omoimas. If you want to ask someone, oyogu koto ga dekimas ka, then this has to be used. Particle ka. Now you can practice it with your partner. Then, ikagetsu de skoshi nihongo ga dekiru to mirasan ga itte imashita. So, we just did de within that span. Skoshi a little. Skoshi a little, Nihongo ga dekiru, can do, to mira ga itte imashita. We have also done this, this is indirect. She was saying that you can learn Japanese in a period of one month. Skoshi Japanese, little bit of Japanese, you can learn in a period of one month. Month. So, this also we have done, and this also we have done. You can revise it here and practice with your partner. Now, let us go back to our dialogue in lesson 20 where we have used nanimo. So, what does nanimo mean? Nani, nani plus mo. So, well, when you join this question word nani plus mo, the meaning is in negative. The verb at the end will always be in negative and the meaning is nothing. Nani mo tabemasen, I will not eat anything. Nani mo mimasen, I will not see anything. So, you have these examples over here. Gozen chiu kara kras ga aru kedo nani mo nai no de ikeru to omoimasu. So, this was the sentence where nani mo is given. And you can see nai no de because there is nothing, thus I think I will be able to come. Now, nani o nomimasu ka? What will you have? Juice o nomimasu. Nani o tabemasu ka? Pizza o tabemasu. So, what will you eat or drink? So, you can answer accordingly. Now, nani mo tabemasen? I will not eat. Anything or nothing. Nani mo tabemasen. Nani mo nomi masen. So now you will see that after nani mo, o is not used. Well, o is optional. You may use, may not use. Generally, o is not used. Kimochi wa wakaru kedo nani mo dekimasen. Cannot do. Nanimo is nothing. So, kimochi is feeling. 
Va vakaru kedo, I understand, but nani mo deki masen, I am unable to do anything. So, it is a feeling of regret. Nani mo shi ma sen. I will not do anything. Nani mo kakimasen. I will not write anything. Nani mo hanashimasen. So, you can use nani mo like this with different verbs with negative. Now, kondo no nichiyobi wa yasumi desu. Nani o shimasu ka? Terebi o miru, I will watch TV. Terebi o minai, I will not watch TV. Then, nani mo shimasen, I will not do anything. Kondo no nichiyobi wa yasumi desu. Nani o shimasu ka? One answer could be nani mo shimasen, I will not do anything. Not do anything. Now, you have something very interesting over here. What is this? Nani mo shimasen. I will not do anything. Nani mo shiteimasen. I have not done anything. So, someone can ask you, what have you done? Nani mo shiteimasen. I have not done anything. It is not my fault. Ega o mitai. Mitakunai. I want to see, want to see and do not want to see. So, I am giving you these examples again and again for you to understand better. Nani mo shitaku nai. Nani o shimasu ka? I do not want to do anything on a Sunday or on a yasumi day, a holiday. I hope this is clear now. So, now I have written a lot of forms that you have covered so far. So, we will just compare these forms and see what they mean and how they are used. Rao san wa kanji o kakimasu. Rao san writes kanji. Rao san wa kanji o kakimasen. Rao san does not write kanji. Then Rao san wa kanji o kakitai. Rao san wants to write kanji. Rao san wa kanji o kakitakunai does not want to write. We have done this construction a number of times. So, we are just comparing this part. Rao san kanji o kakimasho. Rao san lets write kanji. Rao san kanji o kakimasho ka? Shall we write kanji? Then there is still more. Rao san kanji o kaita hoga e. It is better for you to write kanji. Then hana ima asobanai hoga e des. It is better that you do not play now. So, negative do not play. Again practice for hoga same thing here in negative as well. Earlier one was past. Rao san kanji o kaita hoga ito omoimasu. I think that it is better that you write in or write kanji. Then ashita hayai no de Ima terebi minai hoga ito omoimasu. I think it is better that you do not watch TV as it is going to be very early tomorrow. Rao san wa kanji o kaite imasu. He is writing. It is in present continuous. Rao san koko ni kanji o kaite kudasai. Please write kanji over here. Then Rao san kanji o kaite mite kudasai. Please write and Rao san wa kanji ga kakimasu. He can write. Then Rao san wa kanji o kaku koto ga dekimasu. 
he has the ability to write in Japanese. It could also be dekimasen in Meguku. Then, Rao san wa kanji wo kaku koto ga dekiru to omoimasu. I think he will be able to write to write I think he will be able to write in Japanese. So, there are lot of forms here today. All that we have covered, this is a quick revision. So, please go over these and practice with your partner. So, today I have requested Professor Sudhir Misra from the Civil Engineering Department of IIT Kanpur to come and tell you about Japanese culture. He has stayed in Japan for a very long time and he has worked over there. So, he has good knowledge of culture and their customs and how the Japanese people think and their lifestyle. So, he is going to share some of his experiences with you. Today, he is going to tell you about the Japanese calendar. So, listen to what he has to say. Konnichiwa minasan, hajime mashite, watashi wa misra sudhir desu. Good afternoon to all of you and it is a pleasure to be here. My name is Sudhir Misra and as Vatsla sensei said, I have been in Japan for a long time and I am happy to have this opportunity to talk to you about the Japanese calendar. Now, let me show you this slide which says Heisei Sanju Nen, that is what is written here. And what is missing from this calendar which is for January, that is Ichigatsu, you know that. This is the Gatsu part of it, this is Ichi, so you know that this is the calendar for January. But what you do not know is what year are we talking about. We are talking about Heisei Sanju Nen, that is Heisei year 30. Now, what is this year 30 of Heisei? That is what we want to talk about today. So, getting started, I do not know how many of you know that Japan has a reigning monarch or an emperor. Without getting into the politics or the political science as to what is the powers of the emperor, whether it is similar to the British monarchy or the Indian presidential system and so on, we are only interested in the calendar. The fact that there is a monarch and an emperor, that is something which is related to the Japanese calendar. So, today we will spend some time to know how the reign of the emperor is related to the calendar followed in Japan. This calendar of course, is in addition to the western of the Gregorian calendar. Now, moving forward, I will try to use some schematic diagrams to explain this concept to you. This is different points in time, let us say at time t, t1, t2, t3, these are different points in time. Now, at some point in time, there is an emperor A who is ruling, that reign ends, emperor B's reign start here and goes up to this point, emperor C's reign starts here, goes up to this point and let us say that the reign of the emperor D is continuing. So, this is what we would expect and this is what happens. Duration of the reign of an emperor is taken as a period or era or jidai. That is what is very interesting to note about Japanese calendar that it is related to the duration of the reign of an emperor. A, B, C and D, if they are different emperors, the names of those emperors, there will be different eras associated with them. In other words, there is W, X, Y and Z the names of the eras or the jedi which is associated with the reigns of a b c and d in other words let's say the reign of emperor a is w jedi the reign of emperor b is x jedi y jedi and z jedi so there is an era w an era x an era y and an era z during the reign the emperor is referred to as Tenno Heika, which roughly could be translated as His Excellency the Emperor. So, the Tenno is the Emperor and Heika roughly translates to His Excellency. And these are the things that you can probably Google and look up the internet and try to understand a little bit more. After his reign, the Emperor of a period is referred to by Jidai and the Tenno. So, if you are reigning in X Jidai, that emperor will be called X Tenno. For example, it is clear that the Showa Tenno ruled during the Showa era. The Meiji Tenno ruled during the Meiji era. So, going back to this diagram, this Jidai 
will be known as the W Jedi and it is clear that Emperor A ruled in that. This Jedi will be known as X Jedi and it is known that Emperor B ruled here, the Y Jedi, Emperor C ruled here and the D Jedi will come later. So during this reign, this person here, this person here, this person here and this person here, they are just called the Tenno Heika. So the Tenno Heika which is the Emperor, His Excellency or His Excellency the Emperor, that is the reigning monarch and after that reign, the person is referred to by the Jedi name and the then no associated with that. Now what are the periods in modern Japanese history? So if you talk to Japanese, you will find that they always talk in terms of a modern Japanese history and of course the past history. So in the modern Japanese history, which roughly starts in 1868, there was Meiji Tenno. So Meiji is the name of the Jedi and Meiji Tenno ruled from 1868 to 1912. That was followed by Taisho Tenno. Taisho is the name of the Jedi and Taisho Tenno ruled from 1912 to 1926. Similarly, Showa Tenno ruled from 1926 to 1989. This was followed by Heisei, which started in 1989, went up to 2019, and now from 2019 onwards, we are living in the Reva Jedi. Now, it's interesting to see that all these Jedis have two characters associated with it. Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei and Reva. I am leaving it to you as an assignment to Google and find out how the selection is made for these two characters. It's a very interesting exercise, a very scholarly exercise and a lot of scholars, historians, everyone gets together and identifies these two characters from the point of view that they should be easy to pronounce they should be easy to write and most importantly perhaps the message that goes out with the two characters. So if you look at Meiji for example, you are familiar with kanji and the fact that each kanji has a certain meaning associated with it. Meiji is bright and politics, government, administration, rule and so on. So it's something like bright administration if you want to call it that way. Taisho is, Tai is large, you are familiar with words like Daigaku. Show is correct. So basically the message that was sent across is it's the brightest governance. Similarly, Showa is shining bright and harmony and peace. Heisei is even, flat and peace. That's the hey part of it. And the say part of it is turn into, become, get, grow, elapse, reach. So there is this element of message that goes out. The Reva is laws, command, good, harmony, peace. So that's the message that has to be conveyed by this particular Jedi to not only the people themselves, but also to the rest of the world. So moving forward, once a new era starts, the count obviously begins with one. In other words, the year in which the change takes place can therefore be identified on two scales, the last year of the older era and the first year of the newer era. So now, if we go back to this slide, you will notice that 1912 is the end of the Meiji era and also the start of the Taisho era. Similarly, 1926 is the end of the Taisho era and the start of the Showa era. 89, end of Showa era, start of Heisei era. 2019, end of Heisei era, start of Reva era. Now, what really happens is that we know that there are 12 months. January, February, March, April, Ichigatsu, Nigatsu, Sangatsu and so on and so forth right up to 12 and there are certain number of days associated with each of these months. Now, if a particular era goes up to this point and ends, that is the new emperor takes over here, the new Jedi starts here. What it means is that as far as the previous era is concerned, it will have only, let's say, if this was Gogatsu Muika, that is 6th of May. Then up to 6th of May will be designated 
as the last year of this era or the last dates or the last days of this era and this era will start with the next day. So I'm leaving it to you as an assignment again to actually find out when did the transition happen in 1912, 1926, 1989, 2019. So these four years I have given you, but I have not given you the actual dates. Please try to find out when did the actual transition happen. Now I hope you understand this part, which is how the era changes, right? Now moving forward, there's another interesting thing that happens when we follow this eras, which are associated with the emperor's reign. So for example, this is the Western calendar. And this kind of a page is often inserted in a diary in Japan, which enables you to convert the Gregorian calendar to the Japanese calendar and to determine how old a person is in that particular year. So in a Gregorian calendar, it's much simpler. You're born in 1910 or 1950 or whatever it is. 1980, 1950, 30 years old. 1940, 1910, 30 years old. But if the era changes, then age computation becomes more challenging and this kind of a ready reckoner helps you. So what this says is, Taisho 6 is 1917 and in the present age, that is the diary that we are looking at or the time that you're looking at, you will be 101 years old. If you were born in 1921, that is Taisho 10, you will be 97 years old. If you were born in Showa 10, which is 1935, you would be 83 years old and so on. So if you look at this part also, you find that 1926, there is Showa 1, which is written here, that is Showa Ganen, and Taisho 15. Similarly, if you look at 1989, you will find Showa 64 and Heisei Ganen, that is Heisei 1. Of course, Heisei 2 is 1990 because that's the year that follows 1989. So there's something very interesting and now we have the answer to the first slide. That is Heisei 30 refers to 2018 and of course a person born in 2018 and if we are talking of 2018 would be zero years old. So that's the interesting part of the Japanese calendar. There is one more column in this table which we are going to talk about later and that column is this one. I'll probably come back and talk to you sometime about this column. Now where all this is useful is a form like this. Very often we kind of have to fill out forms. Of course, in the online world, things have become slightly different, but in the offline world, it was quite different. And this is a form which is for a pharmaceutical questionnaire. So here we write whatever day you are talking about, that is the particular year or the day when you are applying or when you're filling out the form. Then you have this part here, which is name, which is often in kanji. So here is the furigana where you write it in typically hiragana and this is Jusho, which you write the address. This is Denwa Bango, which is the telephone number. So you fill this out. Then male, female, you fill that out. Interesting part is Senengappi, which is the year of your birth. Now for the year of the birth, you have to circle, you may say Showa 29, Nigatsu Suitachi, or whatever your year of birth is. So if you're born in Heisei, you will say Heisei to whatever the month and the date. So this is how these forms are designed, the older forms, where the date of birth had to be given in the Japanese calendar. Of course, in the modern times, I guess most of the forms have now been redone. And you can write here 1990 or 2001 or whatever the Western calendar says. So as I mentioned, this is the first slide. And now we know that Heisei Sanjunen is nothing but 2018. So this particular image has been taken out of the calendar for January of 2018. And you would like to verify it, please do that. And you would have a better understanding of what things are all about. 
in Japan, typically the emperor's name is not uttered. But of course, as far as historians are concerned, there are names associated with them. Of course, they had their own names. And I'm leaving it to you as a homework to find out from books, internet, as to what were the names of the emperors Meiji, Taisho, Showa, Heisei, and Reiwa. And with this, I come to an end of our discussion today. And I must thank all my Japanese friends for educating me on this. And I must apologize to them as well in case there is a error in what I have communicated to you. I have communicated to you what I understood, what I found was fascinating as far as a calendar is concerned in this day and age. And thank you so much. So I hope you enjoyed what Sir had to tell you about Japanese uh, eras. You can also find on the net and see what they are. And I hope that you will also complete the assignments that he has given you. So there is lots more to tell, as Sir has already said, and I'm sure he's going to give us all kinds of interesting information about Japanese culture and Japanese people, their lifestyle, their way of living, their culture, their habits, how to interact with them, how they interact with everybody. And I'm sure as Sir has a lot of experience of that, he will share some of his experiences with us. So we all look forward to it. And uh, here I would like to also thank Sir for giving us his precious time. So with this, I would like to end our class today. Lot of things have been done. Potential form for group 3 has been covered with Dekiru. There are a few things left which we will cover in our next class. Till then, practice hard at home. Do the conversation with your partner and come prepared for the next class. We are going to do something interesting there as well. Mata aimashou. Arigatou gozaimasu.